Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Headphones and earphones come in all sorts of varieties. You got your earbuds, you got your on-ears, you got your over-ears, you got your under-ears. They like, uh, actually they kind of have that like jawbone sort of based, okay, but they don't go under your ears. Anyway, the point is, Jack did a great video explaining all the different types, but today we're going to talk about one type in particular. In-ear monitors, like Audio-Technica's ATH-IMO line, which uses balanced armature drivers. They go inside your ear canal, and it's like messed up, man, unless you're into that. That's cool. <laughs> Now all headphones use some type of sound transducer or driver to produce sound. There are many different types of drivers such as electrostatic, orthodynamic, and thermoacoustic. But today, we're going to focus on two types, balanced armature or BA drivers and dynamic drivers. Now most headphones nowadays use what's called a moving coil or dynamic driver. It involves a diaphragm attached to a magnetic coil which moves when the varying current of an audio signal passes through it. The diaphragm vibrating produces sound waves which reach our ears. Now, while dynamic drivers are more popular for earbuds, headphones, and for loudspeakers, some in-ear monitors do use dynamic drivers, but they are less popular in IEMs than balanced armature or BA drivers, probably because dynamic just sounds lamer than BA. If I was marketing it, I'd go for the BA driver. In balanced armature drivers, an electric current is passed through a coil that is wrapped around a piece of metal called an armature. This coil is suspended between two magnets, and the changes in current cause attraction between the coil and the magnets, which moves the armature thousands of times per second, and the armature is connected to a diaphragm, which vibrates and produces sounds. This is a bit of a common theme here, produce sounds, headphones. Uh, the design is called balanced because there is no net force on the armature when it is centered in the magnetic field. Now, unlike dynamic drivers, designs, BA drivers do not displace air in order to generate sound. Because of this, IEMs using BA drivers typically provide better isolation because there is no need for a vent to move air around. They're also more power efficient than dynamic drivers because less power is needed to move the much smaller components but they can also lack the wider frequency response of large dynamic driver headphones or even in-ears. I mean, you know what they say, when you can't beat them, uh, use more balanced armature drivers. Don't join them, they'll never accept you. Now, as you can see, there's four in-ear monitors here. The number on the box corresponds to the number of BA drivers it contains. This is how in-ear monitors with balanced armature drivers solve their frequency response problem. The more drivers an IEM has, the wider its frequency response can be. As as individual drivers can attend to the bass, mid, or treble, or in the case of this quad one, the super treble, or something. Um, although, there is a limit, and more drivers doesn't necessarily mean better. The IM01 has a single driver, the 2 has one for bass and one for mids and highs, the IM3 has one each for bass, mid, and high frequencies, and this one Actually, I was wrong. It apparently adds another bass driver. So Keys tried them out, and they have quite the strong low end, just like Uncle Mervyn does. Now, as with all audio issues, Choosing between IEMs with BA or dynamic drivers comes down to what you prefer. A lot of bassists and drummers choose dynamic drivers because of their typically superior bass response, but others might want the more detailed analytical sound of BA drivers, especially when multiple drivers are used in the same monitor. The sound isolation of in-ears compared to earbuds or headsets is also an important consideration. Audio-Technica's lineup here all comes with switchable earpieces and includes comply foam tips which can expand to seal in your ear canal extremely well. Jack was a big fan of these at CES, and uh, Ed actually refuses to use anything, but you also have the option of going with custom molded in-ear monitors, which perfectly seal your ears for maximum sound isolation, but those can tend to be quite expensive, and you'll have to go get molds made at a local shop. So guys, that's pretty much it for this sort of rundown of Basically, I guess we talked about the benefits of balanced armature drivers and why you might have more than one of them in a single earphone. I guess that was the topic of this video. Let us know. What are your experience with, with IEMs? What type do you prefer? Leave a comment below. That's about it for this video, guys. You'll find links for these IEMs and more information on drivers in the description below. Thank you for watching and like or dislike the video, whatever floats your boat. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX.